Hello everyone, and today is part three of creating an online multiplayer game in Game Maker Studio 2. So today we'll be making this where there is shooting and you can damage the other players and you can also chat and it will show up on everyone's screen and it works for both clients as well. From last time the first thing we have to do just like sending our movement data is we have to send a bullet data. So I've created some basic code here for firing a bullet. Basically it checks if you press the mouse button then creates a bullet instance and stores it in bullet or my bullet. And you'll see here that I assign my D to equal my ID and we also set its direction. And then here is where we send the data for that bullet. And it's just like sending the movement data for the player. I have a new enum set up for network.shoot. And we go ahead and assign the bullet's ID, X, Y, and direction. And then we send that off to the server. So before I move to the server, I want to go ahead and show you the bullet which is pretty simple. We just have my ID equals zero and damage equals whatever you want. And you can also assign this when you create the bullet as well if you have players that do different amounts of damage or whatever. And then we assign it speed. And keep in mind that if you're using this on multiplayer, then if you have a very high speed, the bullet will not show up at all on the screen. So just keep that in mind. Then we just have a collision event with the player to destroy itself. Now the collision event in the player with the bullet, we need to take damage. So we say that if the ID of the bullet does not equal the ID of our player, then it didn't come from us. So we must calculate how much HP we will have left. So I say estimated HP equals HP minus the bullet's damage. So if we're going to die from that bullet, then we simply reset our X and Y to be a different X and Y if you want to respawn, and then reset the HP to 100. And this is where you'd also, you know, reset um, the weapon if they have a weapon, you know, that kind of stuff. Otherwise, if we're not going to die from the bullet, we just need to take away the damage that uh, the bullet had. And then... Uh, this doesn't work in this event because uh, it's it's client based so you you pretty much have to have instance destroy in the bullet so once the server gets the data for shooting it's just like reading the movement packet we go ahead and we read the ID of the bullet we go ahead and read its X Y and direction and then we need to create a new buffer to send all of this back out to every client that is connected to the server. So I say var bullet buffer equals buffer create. I go ahead and seek to the beginning of that buffer. And I the first thing I write to that buffer is our network shoot ID. Remember, you need to send that first because that's what you're reading first. And then we go ahead and send the bullet ID, X, Y, and direction. And then we loop through all of our connected players using our total players list which contains the sockets for every player and we send it to that socket for however many players are connected and down here I have this commented because for a bullet you you shouldn't delete the buffer because if you don't it won't show up on the screen so now when the client receives that information about the bullet we need to go ahead and read the ID of the bullet and then we need to check if if we shot that bullet or not so if we did not shoot the bullet then we can go ahead and read the rest of this packet and we can create a new bullet based on this bullets information cuz remember if we if we just create the bullet well, like even if you don't check the ID then you're gonna have duplicates because we created the bullet on the client side that shot the bullet and now we need to create it on everyone else's screen 
So we need to make sure that our ID isn't the same as the bullet's ID. So that's all for shooting. It's pretty simple. And now we're going to move on to the chat system. So I've created an object called OBJ chat. And then in our client create event, down here, I just create an instance of that chat so that it's always available. Now let's go ahead and go into that chat object. And in the, in the create event, I just initialize a DS list that's global that will hold all of our messages. And then we need a variable for how many messages we want stored in the chat. Uh, you can do chat different ways. This is just a simple way that I've found works pretty good. Uh, you can't customize it a whole lot, but you know, works for what we need to do. So stored messages is going to be how many messages are displayed in the chat at once. So I set this to six. Now we create a few variables down here for text input. I just say focus, so that's if we're typing or not. The cursor, our text input, the max amount of characters we can input into the text field and this is also an alarm for the cursor blink just like you'd see here on my screen how the cursor is blinking so we'll go ahead into that alarm zero first just to blink the cursor and I just say if we're focusing so if we're actually typing then we're gonna go ahead and blink this cursor and reset the alarm now we move into the step event and this is where most of the action takes place so here I just say that if we enter into text mode or we press the button for chat then we're going to set the focus to be the opposite of what it currently is and we're gonna set text to equal nothing as well as our keyboard string because if you don't set these to nothing then especially keyboard string then whenever you enter the text chat mode then it'll display all of your recent keys that you press so any of the, your controls like up down uh, any ORD keys it's going to display those unless you reset the keyboard string so if we're focusing then we need to set our text variable to be equal to whatever the player is currently typing which is keyboard string then we need to check if the player has sent this data so if we press the enter key or we release it and our text isn't bigger than our max text then we can go ahead and send this packet to the server I just create a new buffer that says text buffer is a new buffer and I have a new network enum here that is network.chat and we go ahead and send the string which is our clients ID you can have a name here you can have it so people input a name I just have it so it currently uses the clients ID so we go ahead and send that as well as our message now we send this to the server and we delete the text buffer so we don't have any memory leaks then we reset everything back to nothing and we exit chat mode because if you've sent a message you know unless you're spamming the chat you can exit out of the chat mode you can delete this if you want or not and then down here I just control how many messages are being displayed that's where that stored messages variable comes into play uh, we just say while our list size is greater than the stored messages we need to delete the, the longest ago message that was sent so the message that was sent longest ago is going to be deleted and it won't show up on the screen anymore so then in the draw event we just need to say if we're focusing we draw a text box as well as our cursor and we are drawing our text variable because we're in focus and remember we set that to be our keyboard string otherwise we can just say press tab to chat or whatever your chat key is and then down here is where we loop through our list and display all the messages from the chat I set a temporary variable this is where you want the Y coordinate of the chat to be listed and this is what you'll be incrementing so then here I just do a for loop that says if I is less than the size of the chat then we're going to draw a new line which is the current value of I within that list 
and then we just increment y by 16 so that they all space out. So since in the step event we sent the string to the server, now the server is going to get it in the server data script and here we just need to read what that string was through the buffer and then we need to create a new buffer to send that to all of the other clients. So I've created a new buffer called tbuff for text buffer and made it the same parameters as the one we sent the original text in. I seek to the beginning of it and I send our network.chat enum first because that's what you have to do. And then I simply write our message to the buffer. And then we loop through all of our players again, send that back out to them, and then we go ahead and delete that buffer after we use it. So now when every client receives that, we want to go ahead and add it into the chat list. So we just read that message from the buffer and we say, okay, if our chat exists, then our list must exist. So then we can go ahead and add that message to our chat and it should show up on everyone's screen like that because we we don't need to check down here any IDs or anything because we didn't add the chat to the list on the client side. So this happens um, as you send the the message you're also receiving this network chat enum at the same time and you're adding that to your own DS list as well as every other clients. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll be just talking about cleaning some things up and we'll be talking about joining messages and disconnection messages because if you notice whenever you launch this project when you leave a game now the other player that left still shows up in game so we need to figure out a way to destroy their instance of their player as well on everyone's screen so we'll be talking about that next time and i hope to see you there thanks for watching